Arr, mateys, it's Captain Wright. Today I have a fun story to read to you guys. What do you think it might be about? Um, do you notice anything about my attire? I think it might be about pirates. What do you think? This story is called The Pirates Next Door, starring the Jolly Rogers. And it was written and illustrated by Johnny Duddle. So let's read this story and see what we can learn about the pirates that live next door. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, the pirates next door. Matilda lived in Dole on Sea, a gloomy seaside town, too busy in the summer, and in the winter, it shut down. Take a look. There's the bus stop. See these people over here? They look a little bit scared of these people over here. Hmm. There weren't too many kids around and none on Tilda Street, but the lawns were mowed, the cars were washed, and the hedges trimmed and neat. The house next door had been for sale since Tilda was a baby. She hoped a family would move in with a girl her age, or maybe. Do you see their nice neighborhood? Maybe a boy, a pirate boy, ahoy! He had no shoes, an eye patch, and a wooden legged dog. A pirate ship with treasure chests and barrels full of grog. See the boy right there? He's moving in next door. What a surprise. He said, we're the Jolly Rogers. We'll be anchoring next door. We've sailed the seven seas, but now we've had to come ashore. That's my mom over there digging up the grass. I feel a little land sick, but she says that it'll pass. That's dad over yonder, the captain of our crew. He likes to shout, a lot, cause that's what pirates do. Grandpa won't set foot ashore, says that he can't bear dry land. The last time he left the ship, the king chopped off his hand. Check it out, he's got a hook for a hand. That urchin there's called Nugget. She's a rascal as you'll see, though she can't fire the cannon yet because she's only three. That's his little sister. See his family? Oh boy, quite the sight. Next morning, Tilda shouted, Life's not boring anymore. Isn't it fantastic that those pirates move next door? But Mom and Dad were not impressed. The neighborhood will sneer. The way they dress, the way they speak, they won't fit in around here. Their kids are always playing with the most alarming toys. We'd rather you were friends with normal boys and girls. Look at them out there swinging from the ship and look, she's playing with the cannon. Oh no. On Monday morning, Jim Lad came to Matilda's school, though no one else would sit by him. Matilda said, you're cool. You ain't so bad yourself, young lass. For land folk, that is rare. Though I'm a scurvy sea dog, You'll be okay right there. The teacher said, Jim, you should wear shoes. And his uniform was wrong. She wrote a note, but Jim replied, I won't be staying long. We're only here a little while so dad can fix our ship. We ain't cut out for life on land. This day be just a blip. We're the Jolly Rogers and we need to be at sea. School's just grand, but understand, it's a pirate's life for me. There he is, he doesn't quite fit in at school either. After school, a neighbor came around for cake and tea. Her name was Miss Bumble from number 33. Shh, purr. Miss Pinky called town council to see what they could do. She didn't live through two world, war world wars to have pirates spoil her view. Isn't it disgraceful on such a lovely street why they don't even try to keep their front lawn looking neat? 
Oh, now people aren't talking very nice about these pirates. They have to go. Their teeth are black, said Miss Devine, who lived at number 89. Their nails are too. This really truly just won't do. They never wash. Their kids have lice. They also just don't smell that nice. Um, you smell okay. Um, thanks. They wear old clothes and scruffy hats. I'm told their ship is full of rats. They are so being mean to those poor pirates. Also mad was Mr. Shore, the grumpy man at 34. He liked to read the paper on his sunlit deck, you know, but the pirate ship blocked out the light. So he said, they'll have to go. I'd like some peace and quiet, but they're fixing up that boat, hammering all day and night. That thing will never float. The two Miss Yates at 88 told everyone who passed their gate, we saw them grab the mailman. They made him walk the plank. It's lucky he can swim, but we're afraid the mail all sank. Do you think that's true? <laughs> I don't know. They scared the duck, said Mrs. Snucks, and terrorized the park. They boarded people's rowboats and fired cannons for a lark. That's my boy. Or arr, quack, quack. Driving home from Bingo, Miss Plum got quite a fright. They were digging up the roadside in the middle of the night. Oh! They have cutlasses, said Mr. Brown. They'd love to run you through. They'll steal your gold or so I'm told. Whatever shall we do? Well, Miss Bevan from 87 marched down to the town hall. She'd collected a petition, 50 signatures in all. Fewer pirates, more nice people. They're digging holes and fighting fights. It's the beginning of the end. I've lived here for years and years, and so have all my friends. Before you know it, there'll be more. We'll all have pirates right next door. The Jolly Rogers cannot stay. You must make them go away. Check it out, they're shooting their cannon, it says, Boom! They're trying to kick those Jolly Rogers out of town. That's not very nice, is it? Well, that night there was a tapping at Matilda's window pane. Outside was Jim, he whispered. I've got something to explain. Whenever we stop somewhere new, the neighbors are unkind. To show them pirates aren't so bad, we leave some things behind. Shh! they're doing. Messages in a bottle. Hmm, I wonder what they're up to. Our galleon's now ship shape, so it's time we sailed away. And I'll be sad to leave, cause I've enjoyed our stay. But we pirates need adventure to see lands across the ocean. We need cutlasses and treasure maps and lots of suntan lotion. Though our vi visit here just has to end. I hope that you'll still be my friend. To stay in touch, let's send notes. Be sure to use something that floats. He's got a message in a bottle to send her a note with. And she's going to sleep. They're sailing away. Tilda woke up the next morning, puzzled by what Jim had said but she vowed she'd keep in touch as she struggled out of bed. She opened up her curtains as she gave a great big yawn. And there, to her amazement, was an X on every lawn. Look at those X's. What in the world? Let's open up and see what's behind those X's. Oh, do you see? Look, they're digging up treasure. Oh boy, let's check out the other side. What's behind those X's? Wow. Oh, 
kinds of treasure. Oh my. Oh, what a shame that they left. I didn't say goodbye. They're such a charming family. I think I'm going to cry. I'm such a pirate fan, you know. They wore such lovely hats. I rather liked their singing. And I'll miss those darling rats. Now that does not sound like what they said before, does it? But the pirates left them some treasure, so now they're sounding a whole lot different. They think those pirates are nice now. After that, the town went on land loving happily, but Tilda now goes fishing on the jetty by the sea. She's waiting for a message to wash up on the shore from her very special pirate friend, the one who lived next door. So now that it's summer, you can come aboard our ship. We'll pick you up next Tuesday for a special pirate trip. Jim lad. Woof. And there's a little doggy with the wooden leg. He's sending her a message in the bottle and she's waiting to get it. The end. Look, there's their ship sailing away. <laughs> Did you like that story? I thought it was kind of a fun one. So the people in the neighborhood learned that it's not nice to judge people and the pirates were actually really nice to them. So I think that's a great story. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.